Good morning, my friends from all over the world. We have another show of hemp engineering. Uh, today we are uh, interviewing Mr. Uh, David Henman. He is, uh, resides in, in Denver, Colorado. Um, it's an honor for me to have you in my show, David. Uh, you were one of the first people I ever met in the hemp business. And even though your your young age, you have been a light and a and a and a and an inspiring light in in everything that I'm doing in uh, for the hemp business. Welcome. Thank you, Ramon. I appreciate that. We've been knowing each other for a very long time now. Long, long time since 2014, something like this. Something like Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think it was right before my accident. Yeah, that's actually, I never forget uh, when I visit you in your farm, you have over 300 huge, uh, <laughs> eight feet uh, tall <laughs> marijuana trees. <laughs> yeah, those, <laughs> that was those things are big then. That yeah. The biggest one was foot by 10 foot by 10 foot. It was yeah, about as tall as, as the shed it was next to, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, they were trees. They were no, you know, they were no plants. They were trees. <laughs> when it's bigger than you, it's definitely not a plant anymore. Yeah. It's a tree. <laughs> <laughs> and tell us, David, I want, I want everybody to know your background. Tell us about yourself. How did you end up in the hand business? Uh, I went to school. I have three college degrees from Colorado State University being bachelor degrees. Then I'm an associate. I've always been into plants and cannabis. More specifically, it just grows literally like a weed. Um, me personally, what brought me into the hemp industry was the fact that there's a lot more uses you can get out of it rather than just simply just having a smokable product as in marijuana right now. Yeah, marijuana has a lot of diverse uses that we can use it for, but due to the classification and the other more diverse uses from hemp, I like the fact that hemp you can use hemp to build, you can use hemp to heal, and you can use hemp for basically anything else that you have plastic or concrete for. So for me, making a larger impact on the world would make more sense for me to use it in a hemp way right now, just because it's a lot less restrictive and due to the fact that you can literally put up at thousands of acres if you have the funding. Absolutely right, absolutely right. Something that your knowledge, your knowledge and working skills wouldn't be a problem to achieve that goal. Um, yeah, having said that, I do understand that you're working in several projects as we speak. One of them is uh, uh, recovering uh, uh, um, underground facilities using hemp kit, uh, right? Yeah, so right now we're in the process of rejuvenating a Titan One nuclear missile base, which was built in 1963, I think, when they finished it. They built it, obviously, at that point in time to destroy the world. But our point is, is to try to rebuild it and use as many hemp or I like to say just cannabis, cannabis based products that are able to, you know, rejuvenate it and make it a more sustainable and mm, let's say re-equip it with healing the world instead of trying to destroy the whole world. Well, with such a big knowledge and you to be flooded with uh, contracts of all types and uh, taking advantage of your skills, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so right now what I've been trying to figure out is exactly how much lost circulation material that's made from hemp that we can source to soak up some of like the industrial spill mix that's downstairs. So we have some like oil spills and some other type of, I guess you'd say, lack of, I don't know, lack of effort by the military when they decommissioned it. Now there's a bunch of mess to clean up and with the lost circulation material and all the other type of products we can rebuild that place with, I think it's a great idea for it to be able to sh shed light on a darker era, but put light into a new, in, into put things into a new light for people. Um, how, far in, in, how far are you in this project that you're working on in this moment? Uh, at this moment, we're downstairs in the, we have to remove all of the, let's not say, yeah, I would say we have to remove all of the unwanted metal, unwanted equipment, unwanted um, walls, un unwanted barriers, everything like that. So right now we're just gutting the facility before we can start actually putting in more usage of say like hemp concrete, hemp cements. Uh, I really like some hemp brick 
and some hemp insulation that I just found. It's almost like a rock wool. It's almost like a rock wool. It's pretty cool. Yes, yes, I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, um, you have been involved in the happenings in the uh, cannabis in Colorado. Um, I want to share with you, I want you to share with the audience your experience with the prohibition, uh, David. Tell us about your experience. With prohibition, is that what you said? Yes. Uh, I mean, I've, I've been involved in the marijuana, marijuana industry before it was legal. Well, it's been, let's call it a gray area legal from when it went from just medical all the way to recreational. So for me, I think prohibition is not, no longer needed. This plant has obvious benefits, obvious benefits, not only in an economic way, a health way, and in a financial way, not only for the people who grow it, but for the people who benefit from the growth of cannabis. For me, I, I started in the marijuana industry just because it was the first one that was legally, I was legally able to join without having any type of ramifications, you know? Because there for a while, I mean, you could get in a lot of trouble for just simply having a plant in your backyard. And it's like, hey man, it's a plant in my backyard. <laughs> if I could figure out a way to use it and make money, I'll either heal in the heal, either make money in an economic way or healing the planet, whether it's a human or actually doing, you know, like cleaning up like, you know, areas, say like the radiation at Fukushima. Those type of things I think are a benefit that are not looked at in a wide manner for when it comes to cannabis. Everybody wants to look at it as that the devil's lettuce and honestly it's it's god's lettuce not the devil's lettuce come on now i agree with you and from that holistic perspective just the rec recreational and or the medicinal part is only a drop of water in the ocean with everything that we can do with the plant uh it's a fact exactly. yes exactly yeah david what i really for me i really want to get into the i would say the manufacturing or let's call it post-processing you know like getting the plant down into so like like the native americans think about it you know the native americans they used to use every piece of the buffalo because they didn't want it to be wasted and i see that easily doable with cannabis whether it comes down to the shiv the herd the flower the biomass the leaves this is a universally usable plant in so many different ways that to overlook it and simply think it just it alters people's minds for the negative is a very big oversight and it keeps people small-minded not able to open their mind open up to see that for me my long-term goal is to 3d print not hempcrete but i just want to call it canacrete so canacrete being just cannabis based concrete simple thing same thing as hempcrete but a lot of the companies in the marijuana industry a lot of their refuse waste could be then reused and repurposed. And right now it's just literally going into a landfill and not being repurposed. So it's just being wasteful. Um, uh, that is changing very rapidly. A lot of good American companies are awakening to the fact that they should be using uh, more efficient the waste. And a lot of mm -hmm. companies are into the housing business in this moment. It's, it's, it's emerging, it's, but uh, with a huge uh, promising of hope for everyone in the industry. Um, that, I can, that I can tell you responsibly. Yeah, just like that work that we were doing with, um, I forget his name, what's his name out here? Oh, uh, so many. <laughs> Hans, 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 with Hans oh. and the concrete. Like seeing what we can build with that in a, in a legitimate manner if the restrictions due to the, just the material, like the material is stronger, better, and more sustainable than concrete, but due to the fact of what it's built, made from, and the, I guess you'd say the policies or the, what would you call them? The other groups that are trying to make sure marijuana and or cannabis cannot be used for these purposes. I know that recently that hemp in, in the United States just got cleared for a lot more like construction usage. So it used to, you could, you could only basically use it for installation. So it just passed a bunch of hurdles in order to be developed into more sustainable homes, more sustainable structures. And for me, that's where I see the biggest change coming from. Right now, most of our mineral sources or our mining sources or even our concrete sources come straight from the earth and we dig huge pits, whether it's a mine or whatnot when we could literally produce the same type of goods from letting a field grow, not tearing into it, not ruining the land, and literally just reaping that harvest year after year after year. 
So I was talking to a farmer today. He farms wheat and a bunch of other like more like bird seed stuff. And he has 35,000 acres. And he was like, and even understanding 35,000 acres, I don't know a hemp farm that's 30 or even a marijuana farm that's 35,000 acres, you know? And bringing it up to the scale of that is what I would be needing to do to be able to produce enough construction material to say, build 20, 20,000 homes, right? Let's just say this is just obviously a rough estimate. But in order to do that, you're telling me I could build 20,000 homes off the same space every year for the next 100 years and not destroy the land. Exactly to me, right. that sounds like a no-brainer. Exactly right. Exactly right. David, what message would you send to the decision makers anywhere? About, me? Yes, about him. <laughs> well, I mean, this, um, I would say help educate misinformed people because that's hemp if you think about it as an acronym help inform educate help educate uh, uh, either way so i forget exactly how that goes however i want people to know that this hemp is not just something that you can get high off of that you can get this relief from and this one way really the medical issues that it can solve being as a crude oil to help autistic patients, to help cancer patients, but it also can go then and be diverse to be a recreational thing that people can then consume as like a, uh, like a you know, if, if we're in the cannabis industry, most of us have consumed cannabis. It's a, it's a camaraderie thing. It's a group thing and able to share that experience with people. But then we can also bring it down into a real technical level and engineer things with it, 3D print it. We can build things with it. I don't know another plant that is so diverse that can help so many different people in so many different ways. Personally, I would say hemp can directly affect every human being on this planet for a benefit and not negative. And I think people should know that. I guess Mr. Jack Herrer was very right about the plant um, <laughs> and his work and his life that was given to the plant is still doing eco in all of us. Yep, agreed. What a great pleasure having you in our show, Mr. David. It was uh, enlightened. I hope we can meet again soon, anywhere on earth. And, and you are <laughs> always welcome, my brother. Always welcome here for anything that you need, okay? Sounds good, Ramon. Thank you for having me today and I appreciate your time. Love and peace. <laughs> Love and peace. <laughs>